Hey, it's Joel Duff. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, we have to talk about this mammals being found with dinosaurs claim once again. I say once again because a couple weeks ago I made this video right here. Here's the cover slide of it. This answers in Genesis lie needs to stop. And I, I used that word lie and I explained why I thought it was necessary to use such a strong word. And in that video, the gist of it was this. There's an Answers in Genesis speaker and others who have claimed that beavers, modern beavers, modern rabbits, modern hedgehogs, modern squirrels, modern flamingos, that fossils representing those modern organisms, right, that are just like those modern organisms, have been found alongside dinosaurs, implying that those animals lived right alongside the dinosaurs. Now, this is just wrong. I mean, young earth creationists may wish to um, have their beliefs that those organisms were all created at the same time, and they should be present along with dinosaurs, that they, they were present along with dinosaurs. But it's different to claim that you've actually found evidence to support your claim. And that's what's being claimed by Answers in Genesis, and specifically Carl Warner, who is who we're going to talk about today. Carl Warner claims to have found provided evidence for actual fossils representing modern mammals living right alongside of dinosaurs. So now, I said at the end of this video, I, I, made, I, I said, if I come across somebody, another young earth creationist, who continues to make these claims based on Carl Warner's claims, and doesn't do the background research to test his ideas, to look at his data, and see whether he is lying or not, that I was going to have to say something about it. And well, here I am. That means somebody's done it. Somebody has continued to make these claims, which are lies. Let's take a look at a, a just a small piece of a video by a YouTube channel named Apologetics 101, who hosted Carl Warner. And we're actually going to listen to Carl Warner make the original claim that he's been making for more than a decade. And he's going to repeat it again. Exactly what I pointed out in this other video is a lie. So let's talk about that lie after we watch him telling the lie once again. Uh, before we go, I want to ask you another question on uh, mammals. Uh, you found mammals with uh, the dinosaurs too, didn't you? Yes. Uh 400 species of mammals have been found with dinosaurs. 400. You know, there's only 700 dinosaur species, but 400. Don't now, evolutionists think that mammals and, and dinosaurs are separated by like millions of years? No. They would say, if you ask the expert, we interviewed the expert there, Dr. Jesse Lowe at Carnegie, they would say 400 species of mammals lived during the time of the dinosaurs. But see, the public's never told that, you know. And what are these 400 animals? They're all weird names. You would have to take 10 years of your life going around trying to photograph each one. But I can say for sure that the evolution scientists would say of these 400, the following look like modern animals. Like there looked like there was a duckbill platypus mammal next to a dinosaur. That's one. There looked like there was a beaver-like animal next to a dinosaur. There's two. There looked like there was a hedgehog mammal next to the dinosaur. There's three. There looked like there was a Tasmanian devil next to a dinosaur. There's four. It looked like there's a possum next to a dinosaur. There's five. You know, and they would say probably they would probably come up with a list of ten or so like that. But no one's ever done the work like we have for this general picture. Just go and look at these 400 mammals and compare the rest of them. None of them are big. The biggest one is about 25 pounds. It was it was called uh, Rapinomanus, and it was uh, a Tasmanian devil kind of like animal, and it had a dinosaur in its stomach, you know, a baby dinosaur. <laughs> so, but there's there's they haven't found a giraffe next to a dinosaur or a lion. D don't get. I'm not saying that, but they have found 400 species of mammals, and they have found. 10 or so modern versions, or they look like the modern type, next to dinosaurs. So that's enough. That's what I predicted. You should find some. And generally, when they find a mammal in a rock layer, they'll say it's not from the dinosaurs.
Okay, <laughs> there we are. All right, <laughs> now there was a there was a number of notable items in that short clip. Okay, so do you catch that? We've got uh, Carl Warner is claiming that there are 400 or so species of mammals that have been found alongside mammal fossils found in the same layers of rock that dinosaur bones have been found. That's a I, I'm going to say that the relatively uh, accurate statement, I don't know exactly how many different mammals it is now, but 400-ish sounds very reasonable. He went on to say that there's, you know, he's trying to contrast that with, well, like there's only 700 dinosaurs. So it's almost as if mammals and dinosaurs were almost equal numbers. And of course, his larger point is, is that somehow um, modern scientists and evolutionary biologists somehow ignore the mammals and we only like to show the dinosaurs and so we're creating a false perception of what the what the past world was like um so he's saying 400 and 700 well there's there's a lot more than 700 species of dinosaurs there's a lot of debate about exactly how many dinosaurs i mean there's there's probably 13 or 1400 at least named uh and, and of course there's probably many more that we haven't found just like there's going to be more mammals that we haven't found but the big thing he gets to is then out of these 400, do you notice that? Out of these 434 or whatever number he used there, out of those 434, there's like 10 of them that are like modern mammals, right? That, that are they're just the same as modern mammals. Now, what does he mean by modern mammals? Then he gives a couple of examples, right? He gives the example of the beaver. Well, that's the one I discussed in the other video. And I talked about that particular beaver and how it's not a beaver, right? There's a fossil that's been named or called just in a just common name of the Jurassic beaver. It turns out, though, that the original paper never refers to it as a beaver, never even talks about having beaver like characteristics. Now, it did happen to have sort of a flattened tail, and that's the only reason it's called a beaver, but that particular fossil represents a group of organisms that are in no way related to modern beavers. They're not part of the modern beaver kind. They're not in the beaver family. They're not even in the family. Uh, they're not even the order, larger group of mammals that this particular fossil's in. This particular fossil is outside of all modern mammals living today unrelated, you know, more distantly related to any of the mammals that are alive today. Like, is this different from a, um, a marsupial is from you and I? That's how different it is from a beaver, right? So, all right, just like the beaver claim, completely wrong. And he's wrong because he simply looked at some, a, 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 uh, a report from a science writer who just to give like some feeling for the readers, like what was this animal? What did it kind of look like? Well, it kind of looked like a beaver, all right? I mean, there are reptiles that kind of look like mammals, all right? But just because they kind of look like a mammal doesn't mean they are a mammal or and specifically related to an individual, very particular mammal. Yet Carl Warner is like, there were beavers found alongside of dinosaurs. False goes on to say that there was um, a Tasmanian devil. The last thing he's talking about, the Tasmanian devil, and he mentions the actual name of that organism, like the scientific name of it, right? Do a quick Google search. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it for you here. I'm not gonna do it for uh, the host of Apologetics 101 who is interviewing uh, Carl Warner and who who claims that, uh, you know, Carl Warner's done all this research, right? I challenge him to simply Google that name and do just read the Wikipedia page on that particular organism. The particular organism is described as a member of an extinct family, an extinct family that is distantly related to all modern mammals. It's even more different than modern mammals than even the uh, monotremes, right? The egg laying uh, mammals. Potentially, it was an egg-laying mammal itself, and yet, uh, so clearly not a marsupial, right? The original research, the original article that describes that fossil, I looked it up, no mention of having marsupial-like features. I mean, marsupials are distinct organisms, 
right? Distinct type of mammal as opposed to the placentals, right? Um, and yet, nothing about that article, nothing that you would read about that particular fossil would make you think at all that that organism was a marsupial, much less a possum. Yes, it was kind of a small little organism with kind of a long tail and four little feet and kind of a projected uh, nose, right? And so when you put those characteristics together, it's kind of like, hey, it's kind of possum-like in its features. That's like going to Australia and saying that the, the sugar gliders there, which are actually a relative of possums themselves, all right, which are marsupials, and looking at them going like, they don't look like, uh, they look like flying squirrels, which I've had in my attic. Well, but they're rodents, right? So, which are, which are placentals. That's a very different thing. Just because something looks like something doesn't make it that thing. Carl Warner's entire argument is based on some superficial characteristic, which is similar to a characteristic of a modern mammal, but that doesn't make it a modern mammal. Now he listed off several other things. He talked about a hedgehog. Hedgehog is the same thing. Go look up, just do a Google search on uh, hedgehog-like organism, like fossil, found with the dinosaurs. And you'll come right to the various articles, including the original research article, if you look far, hard enough, that describes this hedgehog-like creature that lived in the time of the dinosaurs. Now, what makes it hedgehog-like? So, I mean, hedgehogs are these spiny mammals, right? So that's a, that's a particular adaption of the epidermis and the hairs and all that stuff that, that make this sort of spiny projections all over the body. So there's been a fossil found of a mammal type organism, all right, a type of mammal, although not any kind of modern mammal, that has some kind of quills on it that are very much like a hedgehog and the animal is a similar size to a hedgehog. That does not make it a hedgehog, okay? Because if you go in, you go to the original research and you find out, like anatomically, the bones of the organism and other things, especially the teeth, right? The teeth are a giveaway because all modern therians, all right, uh, marsupials and um, placentals have particular uh, tooth types, all right, and shapes, all right, and the, the jaws and all that stuff, all right? And this is from another group that is extinct. Right, the entire group, all the different species and the members of it, that is a different group of mammals, not placentals, not marsupials, right? And not the egg laying monotremes. Another completely extinct group has completely different characteristics that make it obvious that they're not any of those modern types of mammals that we have alive today. But this particular animal happened to have a quill like feature. That does not make it. It does not make it a hedgehog. It makes it an organism that has similar features to a hedgehog. It's kind of like, oh, like, like kind of like a dinosaur, maybe like a, an organism that has dinosaur-like features but also has feathers, right? That doesn't necessarily make it a bird, right? Is because it has that particular characteristic. So now think about this. There's ten different animals. Ten. He mentions like, okay, there's four hundred some. And all of them have these really bizarre names. Like he said, you wouldn't recognize them. Yeah, he's right. There are all these members of these other groups of mammals that are extinct, that have been classified as different kinds of mammals, of which no members exist today. And then there are, Carl Warner is claiming there are 10 things that are just like modern mammals. You know, like he's, 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 he's talking to Apologetics 101, and he's telling his audience, and then this is what Answers in Genesis is basing their speakers. Their speakers are using Carl Warner's language here, in which he describes them as modern mammals, like they found beavers. Now, you, you push Carl Warner, I'm sure he's going to say it wasn't exactly the same species of beaver day, but he would clearly be, he clearly thinks it's the same kind of organism, right? In, in the parlance of young earth creationism, a kind being the beaver kind. There's no way that this organism is in the beaver kind. If he were to really study the original literature, 
he would agree it's not the beaver kind. And I can tell you there are other young earth creationists, including those that answers in Genesis, if they were consistent with their own literature, that have identified that particular fossil as being a member of the dodecadon or uh, docodons. But the docodons are a group of mammals, kind of like saying monotremes or marsupials, a group of mammals <laughs> completely extinct. And answers in Genesis recognize that as a family, as a kind, an extinct kind of mammal. So you can't call those modern mammals and say that they're like something that you would recognize. Hmm. Maybe I should show you some of those other groups. I, you know, I've been talking about some of those other groups. Let's take a really quick look at some of those other groups and then we'll wrap this up because this doesn't have to be a big deal. I'm just saying these are lies. Right? The, Carl Warner is, um, it, it's, it's hard to say he's not lying because he certainly has heard people like myself and many others point out exactly what I'm pointing out to him. If he's unwilling to look at that literature, if he's unwilling to actually examine the evidence, right, then he's willfully remaining ignorant, right? And he is allowing himself to lie um, and, and sort of, I guess, maybe claim he's not lying because he's ignorant, but he's portraying himself as an expert, right? He's acting like I've looked at all this stuff. I've traveled the world. I've spent, I've spent years studying this stuff. You can't say you've spent years studying this stuff and not have stumbled on the truth of these things, okay? <laughs> not have understood that none of these fossils that he mentions, really, of, of, this, of the ones that he mentions, none of them are found, right, with dinosaurs. Oh, I just remember he met, does mention a platypus-like animal. Now, that one I could buy, right? Because actually there is evidence that a platypus, a monotreme, has been found with dinosaurs, right? And that, there's, I don't know any evolutionary biologists, I don't know one who, who would um, dispute that fact, right? That there are some monotremes that are found with dinosaurs. Yeah, you know what? I said, I said, Paul Jacks, one should, one should do this research, but let, let me do like the bare minimum for him. All right, because I think it's going to make part of the point here. Um, here we have, let's just go to the Wikipedia page for uh, Rapenomamus, uh, which is the last fossil that uh, Carl Warner mentioned, which he talked about being like a Tasmanian devil. All right, he says, Tasmanian devils found with the dinosaurs. Here, And he mentions this specific name. All right, so let's see, what, what does Wikipedia say about this? Well, Rapenomamus is a genus of opossum to badger-sized gopaconodontids. Right, which is a type of mammal. Now, notice that the name itself actually means reptile mammal. <laughs> yes, like because it has features that are similar to reptiles too. Right. So, all right, was Carl Warner going to say that uh, this is a reptile because it's described as reptile-like as well? Um, anyway, a couple different species have been found. It's found in the Cretaceous period. Well, what is a gopaconodontid? Right. It's not a marsupial. It's not in the Therian, uh, you know, placental group. It's not a monotreme. It's another type of mammal. Well, Tasmanian devils are, right, right? They're marsupials. This is not a marsupial. Not described as a marsupial anywhere. Right now, it does kind of look like a possum, which kind of looks like a Tasmanian devil. Right? But just, you know, that morphological appearance doesn't mean that it is one of those things. Um, but what we want to do is we want to go to the mammal group. I just want to show you from Wikipedia. This is one. Um, now, let's just let's just think about these mammals that uh, that these other 400 species of mammals, because here's what's amazing about what Carl Warren is doing there. <laughs> you know, Apologex One should have asked him about this. Why are there like 400 different mammals which are not anywhere near or similar at all to modern mammals? And you could only find 10. Like it, out of all those mammals, there's only 10 of them that you can identify as being somehow mammal-like, like like modern mammals. And what I'm telling you is you know, out of those 10, 
all or most of them are nothing like a modern mammal. They're not related to modern mammals. They're not, they're not in the same kind of any particular kind of modern mammal that's alive today. All right, so, so what are these other 400 types of mammals? Well, you could look at this as in a broader group. There's many different ways that the, the fossils in mammals have been classified, but they all have some a lot of similarities you know, based on the characteristics that have been identified. So you get this, you have mammiliforms, mammiliforms, right? Everything that's like a mammal. And some people might say they are all mammals, but it gives you the idea that they're, they're much broader than the modern, you know, group of mammals that are alive today. If you take all mammals alive today and like looked at the characteristics, you'd put them into this group and they have the, they share these characteristics. But once you start adding these other things that are extinct, you have to like make the group bigger. All right. So you have mammiliforms, right? So you have docodontids, right? The docodonta and the docodonta would include this organism that has been called the Jurassic beaver, right? Be just because it has like a kind of a flattened tail, but its teeth are totally different. It might've been aquatic, but its anatomy is not a beaver. In fact, it's not at all a theria. And theria would be all the mammals you're familiar with, right? Your marsupials and your placentals. Now, there, of course there's the monotremes, but that's the ductile platypus. So that's a weird one, right? And echidna. Uh, so that's the docodonts. And there's many, many dozens of species that are known, and they're only known from the dinosaur time, right? They're only known from the period when the dinosaurs lived. And then I'm not going to go through these others. I've talked a lot about the multituberculata, which is a huge group with several hundred species. And notice they are not any kind of modern mammal. None of them are. They're all considered in a completely different group, all of which are extinct. Now, some of those survived after uh, the dinosaurs went extinct, but most of them lived with the dinosaurs. It was one of the, one of the dominant, most common form of mammals during the time of the dinosaurs. But none of the hundreds of multituberculate species, which we know of, are alive today, and we don't believe they have any descendants. Right? They're all extinct. And then you have this Gobicanodontids, right, which we were just talking about, which is this thing that uh, that uh, Carl Warner is calling a Tasmanian devil, except that, again, it's not in the theory. So the theory is all your modern mammals, right? Um, so, and then there's other groups, too. Uh, and if you go back before the mammaliforms, right, there's the psychodonts, and there's, there's these other things. Well, then if you go a little farther back, there's the synapsids. All those things are called the mammal, are mammal-like organisms. They're not reptiles, right? They're grouped into this group called the synapsids, um, which had some mammal-like features. And then eventually you get to the mammaliforms, right? And the mammaliforms have enough characteristics in common that, that are similar to today's mammals, and, you know, all the living mammals that they are like those mammals enough that you're like, okay, these are mammaliforms, right? Closer to the mammals. So Carl Warner is, I mean, again, Carl Warner is saying there's, yeah, there's like 400 different uh, mammals found with dinosaurs. And even he admitted in that clip that they were all small, like 25 pounds might've been maxed out. The thing about that, that beaver like thing is it's actually one of the largest mammals that has been found with dinosaurs. They're all tiny. And he's right. There's no giraffes. There's no hippos. There's no primates. There's no, I mean, you think about all your popular, oh, there's no carnivores, meaning bears and dogs and weasels and cats, right? No hyenas. There's no, I mean, if you think of all your major groups, there's no ungulates. There's hundreds and hundreds of ungulates, species, many different kinds of ungulates, hoofed animals. And there are thousands of species of extinct ungulates that are found in the fossil record, but none of them are found with dinosaurs. All that's found with dinosaurs are these very small animals that are kind of rodent-like. Um, and the vast majority of those are unconnected to modern day mammals. They're a side branch that, uh, that was pop, you know, had lots of species. They all went extinct 
a lot of them going extinct at the same time the dinosaurs went extinct. There's a few survivors in one sub-lineage, which is the, the placentals, right, or the, the, the Therians, and they survive and they become, at least that's what it, what it, what the fossil record makes it makes it look like, is they diversify into all the different kind of mammals that are around today after the dinosaurs are gone. So Carl Warner is he's trying to make it sound like, oh, there's just like the same kind of mammals alive today as there was back then, and here's the evidence for it. Again, I can say you know I can say he's he has the right to believe that all modern types of mammals. I mean, I'm sure he believes that beavers existed with dinosaurs. I believe, I know he believes that cats existed with dinosaurs, that dogs existed with dinosaurs, that giraffes existed, that elephants lived with the dinosaurs or at the same time as the dinosaurs, not necessarily right next to them, but somewhere on the earth, they were alive, right? Because he believes that all those different types of animals were alive at the time of the flood because they were all created at the same time. So you're right. His expectation is, right? He goes in, to looking at the fossil record with an expectation that we should find fossils of every type of mammal, every kind of mammal should be found with the dinosaurs, right? And I would say that that is a prediction of his model of Earth's history. He should expect that from his model. So what's amazing is, is that he doesn't find that, right? He's admitting there's like 400 some species of mammals that are in the fossil record with dinosaurs. And then he, He's saying like maybe 10 of these look like modern mammals. Like he's trying to take 10 of those and put them into modern groups of mammals that you and I know. Well, think about how many different mammals there are. There's hundreds of different kinds of mammals like Answers in Genesis has, right? And only 10 of those are have actually been found with the dinosaurs. And then as I'm showing you, <laughs> they're they're not even modern mammals, right? You know, like he's, he, he's completely confused those fossils with anything that's related to a modern group that's alive today. And so that's really striking. Like the expectation that you should find a giraffe fossil, you should find a hippo fossil, you should find a Mars, uh, you should find kangaroo fossils, you should be finding lemur fossils, you should be finding uh, ungulate fossils, right? You should be finding horse type fossils, you should be finding wildebeest type fossils. You should probably find cow fossils, right? You should be, I mean, you could just keep on going and going and going. There's, you know, should be finding rabbits. You should be finding, you know, mice, you know, should be finding, I mean, it, all those different, I mean, why aren't mice found with dinosaurs? I mean, they could have lived around dinosaurs. If all these 400 little small mammals okay. could live around dinosaurs, why not mice? Why didn't they get preserved in the flood along with dinosaurs? Right? So in, in a way, it's, it's, it's it, he is, the way he um, talks about all these different mammals having been found, it almost defeats his own argument about the fact that there should be more mammals, modern mammals found with dinosaurs. It should be shocking to him how few have been found. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, yes, Carl Warner has been promoting this myth for many years, more than a decade. And he claims to have done research, but his research seems to be looking at a popular press article that has a title that says beaver, the Jurassic, a Jurassic beaver found. If you read even the popular article, just down a few sentences, it makes it immediately apparent they didn't find a beaver. They found something that had a beaver like trait, right? It had a tail like a beaver. And so they just like, Hey, it's kind of fun. We'll give it this thing called the Jurassic Beaver. And then if you go to the original, or, I mean, I'm beating a dead horse now, but if you go back to the original research, it doesn't even mention a beaver at all. It doesn't even try to compare it to a beaver. Why hasn't Carl Warner figured this out? Right? I can understand him being, you know, misled by popular press articles. But then again, he's trying to claim he's like more than just a, a, a lay person who's just picking up newspaper articles and coming to conclusions, right? You know, he went out and he's talked to experts and so forth. And yet he's come away with these incredible misconceptions about the fossil record. And then it's been explained to him by many people how he's wrong. You'd think 
you wouldn't want to make a mistake, right? You wouldn't want to be speaking untruths. Shouldn't you want to go back to the literature and actually look at it yourself, the original papers, and ask yourself, hmm, maybe there's, you know, maybe I'm not, uh, maybe I was wrong about how I've been portraying this. You know, go ahead and say there's a beaver-like organism. Now, I have heard, I have heard some young creationists say that. They'll say, like, a beaver-like organism has been found. But as I said in my previous video, anyone watching that, anyone in their audience, when they say beaver-like, you just think, well, they mean something just like a beaver. But this one thing wasn't like a beaver, really. You know, it's like, it, it, in taxonomic sense, it's nothing like a beaver. It's not at all related to a beaver. And yet you leave the audience with that. I mean, certainly Apologetics 101 absolutely believe this guy because I've had co I've had a, a comment exchange with him. And in that exchange, he basically says, Carl Warner, you know, proved that there are mammals in the fossil record that are exact. He used this word exactly like mammal species or mammals alive today. Right, modern mammals alive today. There are ones that have been found in the fossil record exactly like them. He used that word exactly. Right, that is utterly wrong. He hasn't done the research. I didn't expect him to. Is it? He's at, he has a guest on and he's asking them questions and he's listening to what this guest is telling him, and that's what he that's what he learned from this guest. Right, so Carl Warner. You know, you might say, well, that's not what I meant, but he certainly was willing to allow other people listening to him to believe that's what he's saying. I think that's lying, right? I call that lying because that's deception. It's intentional deception uh, when you do that. Okay, the saga of the fossil record and whether modern mammals have been found with dinosaurs, I'm sure will continue. Uh, because I don't see Carl Warner changing his tune. This is like his whole story. This is his whole shtick. Um, he's devoted enormous amounts of time, books, videos, all kinds of stuff to this. Um, and I've seen no evidence of any introspection on his part and ability to be reflective about what he said at all. So unfortunately, this, this particular myth is going to be perpetuated. And I'm sure we're going to hear more speakers continue to make these claims because there's this trusted source within the Young Earth Creationist community that is providing this valuable information that uh, Carl Warner is providing. I'll just add the caveat because I, I want to be fair to Young Earth Creationists. I know Young Earth Creationists um, personally who think that Carl Warner is uh, not being forthright. Okay, he either is just very ignorant. You know, he's gung ho. He he wants to, you know, he's 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 zealous, all right, for preaching the word of young earth creationism. But they would say that his in his zeal, he has overlooked like facts, right? That he's misrepresenting facts. And that he's not representing the truth of the actual fossil record in this case. All right, let's quit there. Um I had the feeling I'll be making another one of these videos because the next time I see this, I'm going to have to call it out again. We'll take a look at some more. You know, that'll give me an opportunity to maybe get into some of the original literature um, next time and look at some of the your actual fossils and point out the specific differences between them and modern mammals. All right, with that, thanks a lot. Hit like, subscribe, and um, we'll be back. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.